All right, so on this one, we just need to find out which one is a triangular or rectangular prism. So the difference is one is a triangle and the other one is a rectangle. So if we look at this, all we need to do is figure out which one of these has a triangle at all. Because prisms always have rectangles anyways as their side faces. So on this one, we can see clearly that this is a triangle. And so this one would be the triangular prism. And this one, uh, the rectangular prism, but uh, the thing is we really don't know which one is uh, the rectangle part of this. So um, if we look at this, maybe the top is the rectangle. And these are the side faces, okay? Or perhaps maybe this front one is one of the rectangles it's talking about. And then the back one is the other one. So these ones, these diagonal ones would be the side faces, okay? All right, so this one, it doesn't have a picture of the 10 from above, but we can see if it's just one of these triangular tents, okay? If we were to look at this from above, may have a little bit of that angle there but uh, you'd still see it something like this okay well the inside we're not really worried about but the outside we can see here is a rectangle so you would see a rectangle on number one and on number two what formula would you use to find the area of the rectangle it's just length times width Right, finding the volume of a prism is really just a matter of first finding the area of whatever type of prism it is. So if it's a triangular prism, you would find the area of the triangle and then multiply it by its height. If it's a rectangle, just find the area of one of the rectangles multiplied by its height. And same with pentagons and hexagons and so forth. So, for example, on this one, this is a rectangular prism. So all I need to do is figure out the area of one of the rectangles. And I'll multiply that by the other or the third measurement there. So now let's say that this slanted face right here is the rectangle because we can see clearly which measurements go where. So first, the area of the triangle is 4 times 3 which would be 12 centimeters cubed. So if I wanted to find the volume of this thing, then what I'm going to do is take this 12 centimeters cubed, and we could see its height right here like this would be this 5 centimeters. So we've got the 12 centimeters cubed times 5 centimeters, which would give us 60 centimeters. And this is cubed, okay? Now the reason this is cubed is because this is a three-dimensional object. So since it's three dimensions, we've got three there, centimeters cubed. Or in different terms, we can look. Yeah, sorry, that area should have been squared there. So if we look at this, this area was centimeters squared, so centimeters times centimeters. But then we add, we multiplied by this 5 centimeters as well. So we've got a third centimeters we're multiplying by, which is why it's centimeters cubed. As we saw there in the last example, the, the volume of any, this is just for rectangular prisms, okay, is just the length times the width times the height. So in other words, we're just going to take the three numbers that are given, 3, 9 and a half, and 5, and multiply them. 3 times 9 and a half times 5. Let's make those a little bit bigger so they're not confused with decimals. And that would give us 142.5. And notice the measurements here is in meters. And since it's volume, it's three-dimensional, so it's cubed. Well, 
Okay, so the nice thing about a triangular prism is that let's let's take a look here. So let's draw ourselves a nice uh, rectangular prism. All right, so if this is our rectangular prism, we know that we can find the volume of this thing by simply multiplying the length times the width and the height. Now, some of you are looking at this wondering why uh, we haven't uh, changed where these go. Okay, it really doesn't matter. We could alter these so that, for example, uh, and some of you, I'm sure, think this the height should be here. Maybe some of you consider the width here and the length. That is not going to matter. All right. Uh, now, so that is a rectangular prism, but what we really want here is to look at a triangular prism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this from this corner to this corner here, okay? So it's going to cut it all the way through and you can see then if that were to happen all of this other stuff would then go away. So this would be gone, this would be gone, same with this. I wouldn't need any of this garbage here or this stuff, okay? So there we go, we have a triangular prism. So what is the relationship of this with the rectangular prism? Well, you could see from this rectangular prism that all we did is we sliced it directly in half. So if I wanted the volume of a triangular prism like this one here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the volume of a normal rectangular prism, but since I cut it in half, I'm just going to divide it by two. So if you want to see this as though it is the volume equals the length times the width times the height and then divide by two, both of these are the same thing. So let's look at this example right here. So if we were to treat this a prism as though it were a full rectangular prism. Okay. So again, these are imaginary lines like this. So it would be a full rectangular prism. Then the volume would be just the three numbers, length times width times height, six times eight times nine. But since we know this is a triangular prism, we're just going to divide everything by two. And that gives us 216 feet and it's not just feet though remember we multiplied three different feet together feet times feet times feet and give us three feet so it's feet cube and that's volume and it's cube because it's three dimensional now if you're confused by this what you can do is look and see what the book has done they've taken B that's the area of the base now the base is always in the shape of the type of prism it is. And since this is triangular, you've got one half times the base of the triangle, which we'll say is eight. And we'll multiply it by the height of the triangle, which is six. Okay, that'll give you the area of the base, and you're just gonna multiply it by the height, which would be nine. So we'll take a few seconds to look at this one and see if you can solve it. All right, so since we did the last one using uh, half of a rectangular prism, let's look at this one. And we'll treat it as though, let's find the area of the base first, which we can see is this triangular, this triangle right here, since it is a triangular prism. So we first need to find the area of the triangle. Well, the area of a triangle is going to be uh, the base, which in this case is 4, right here, times the height, which is 5, and that is shown along this pink line here, and we can see that it's the height of it because it is that 90 degree angle. And then the last thing we'd need to do is just divide by 2. Again, there's many different ways that we can show that we're dividing by 2, uh, but in this case we're just going to show, show using this fraction here. So. Uh, 4 times 5 divided by 2 would give you 20 divided by 2, which would give you tw 
tw uh, sorry, 10. 10 inches squared. All right, now if I want the volume, I'm going to take the area of that triangle and multiply it by what we would consider the height. So the area, of course, was 10 inches squared. We're going to multiply that by the 7, which would be this, or this one, or this length here. So 10 times 7 quickly is just 70. It is in inches, but it's volume, so it's cubed. Three dimensions. All right, on this one, let's find the volume of each box, and then we'll see which one is bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter how we say that we've compared them. So we look at box A. It's got these three dimensions. Box B has these three dimensions. And so we're just going to multiply them all together. All right, box A. This is box A, not area, okay? These are rectangular, and again, we're not, we're not worried about these handles, okay? So let's just take everything and multiply it together. So we got 3.75 times 7.5 times 10, which gives us, and this is the volume of A, and I have 281.25, this is inches cubed. All right, that's the volume of A. Let's now look at B. So the volume of B is going to be those three multiplied together. So 3.75 times 8 times 9.5 equals 285 inches cubed. So which one, which one of these is bigger? Clearly we can see then that this box, according to volume, is actually bigger. Now, on the other hand, we could say, because it just wanted a comparison, you could say if you wanted to, box A has less volume. All right, give these three a shot, and then uh, we'll give you the answers here in just a couple seconds.